So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Ahmad wa usalli ala Rasul al-Kareem, amma ba'd. I'm going to, inshallah, say a lot of things very, very fast. Hopefully, it won't be too disjointed. It'll have uh, some coherence to it. Wherever the Prophet went, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he would tie people into a treaty. Okay? When he went to Medina, he signed treaties there. Whenever he would go outside Medina, whatever tribes he met, he would ask them, sign a treaty with me. And when he went to Mecca in Hudaybiyah, he signed a treaty with them. So this was the prophetic way that the Prophet ﷺ would sign a treaty where a treaty of peace, a treaty of peace doesn't necessarily mean an alliance. Okay, uh, A treaty of peace uh, would be that you're just not going to fight with us when the Quraysh are fighting with us or the other tribes are fighting with us, you're not going to fight with us. And many times, that's all the Prophet ﷺ asked the people. Okay. So now, we have to balance this sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ and his understanding of how to operate in a geopolitical environment, tying people to a treaty or tying people them to a peace contract from the following verses of the Quran. So I'm going to take it from the top and then build it uh, down inshallah ta'ala if Allah allows me to do that inshallah. Okay. So in this verse of the Quran, Qulillahumma malik al-mulk, say Allahumma, meaning Allah by all your beautiful names, malik al-mulk, who is the king of kings, tu'til mulka man tasha, you give kingship to whoever you will, right? So in reality, in reality, authority belongs to Allah. And Allah gives it to whoever he wills. Okay. And you take away kingship, you stri strip it away from whoever you want. And you give honor to whomever you will. And you humiliate whoever you will. Whatever is happening in the world, in your hand is all goodness. All goodness, total goodness. إِنَّكَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And you have the ability and the power and the capability to over all things. تُولِجُ اللَّيْلَ فِي النَّهَارِ You merge the night into the day. وَتُولِجُ النَّهَارَ فِي اللَّيْلِ And you merge the uh, day into the night. And تُخْرِجُ الْحَيَّ مِنَ الْمَيِّتِ وَتُخْرِجُ الْمَيِّتَ مِنَ الْحَيِّ And you bring the living out of the dead and you bring the dead out of the living. وَتَرْزُقُ مَنْ تَشَاءُ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ And you give to whomever you will with absolutely no measure. Okay, this word غَيْر بِغَيْرِ حِسَابٍ This غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ is to emphasize the point of it and its opposite. So, meaning you give to whomever you want without any measure is the, tr is the general translation. But if you understand the word غَيْر with absolutely no measure. Okay, with a complete blank check, Allah gives and He gives. Now look at what Allah says: لا ت... لا The believers do not take kafirin. Kafirin here, as in the rest of the Quran, when it's referring to the disbelief, one is kufr, meaning the opposite of shukr. وَمَنْ كَفَرَ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ غَنِيٌّ حَمِيدٌ وَمَنْ يَشْكُرُ فَإِنَّ مَا يَشْكُرُ لِنَفْسِهِ uh, right? And then, Are you going to be one who's thankful or the one who's... So, kufr has two opposites. One opposite of the word kufr is shukr. And the other opposite of the word kufr is iman. So, the opposite of uh, kufr is iman and the opposite of kufr is shukr. The word kafirin is different from jahilin, okay? It's different from jahilin in the sense that kafirin are the people that are opposing Islam. Okay? kafirun. The people that are jahilin, they don't know yet. And this is mentioned in Surah Fat, it's also mentioned in Tawbah, in other places in the Quran. People who yet don't know and they don't oppose Islam. They're not for Islam, they're not for against Islam, meaning in the seerah of the Prophet There was a time where 
people heard about the Prophet, but they don't really know Islam. This is also uh, pointed out in Surah Yasin. The believers will not take those who oppose actively against Islam. Now keep this very important in mind. Because we have to now discuss after this, who are those groups of people that are today, now, opposing Islam actively. So we're going to discuss that. So you can never take those that are opposing Islam as your friends, min dunil mu'mineen, especially over the believers. وَمَنْ يَفْعَلْ ذَلِكْ And whoever does that, فَلَيْسَ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْءٍ He has nothing to do with Allah. إِلَّا أَن تَتَّقْمُوا مِنْهُمْ تُقَى Except if you do something to protect yourselves because of the situation you're in. يُحَذِّرُكُمُ اللَّهُ نَفْسَهُ Allah is warning you about Himself. وَإِلَى اللَّهِ الْمَصِيرِ And in the end you have to go to Allah. So, what is the result here? Look, Allah gives kingship to whoever He wants. He gives authority and power to who He wants. He gives honor to whoever He wants. When Muslims are, don't have power, when Muslims don't, are humiliated in the world, it's the will of Allah and biyadihi al-khayr in his hands is all good. Okay, When he wants, he can give us power. But don't be in so haste for dunya and for power and for wealth and for whatever that you even become friends with the people who oppose Islam. Okay, So now, that's my first point. The things are changing in this war situation very quickly. So I want to point out a few things. Allahu Akbar. Now look. It's very important. <coughs> In the future, you will find nas. Why future? Because it wasn't. Uh, it it has the future tense and the present tense. nas. The most severe of the people. Adawatan for hatred. amanu. For the people who believe al yahud. The Jews they hate the believers. And وَالَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا in the pagans. As you know, today we live in a world where the leadership, and remember this word I'm underlining, leadership of enmity by the Jewish leadership and the Hindutva and Hindu leadership in India is at a rise. So at that moment in history we're sitting where these two groups, their hatred for Islam is on the rise even though they hide it at that time at that time and what has happened just so we're clear these Yahud they have tied the Muslims of Arabia into a contract of peace so that they can continue to hurt the Muslims in Palestine Meaning what? You made the people who oppose Islam as your friends over the believers. Let's continue. And in that time where you will be surrounded by enemies, and you will see why I'm saying surrounded by enemies, لَتَجِدَنَّ أَقْرَبُهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا you will find those that are nearest in love to the believers. They will say their identity is not going to be the Judeo-Christian civilization. This is now very important to understand specifically. The Judeo-Christian civilization will always make demands upon you that will always in the end hurt you. And the Quran is very clear about this. I'm going to show you inshallah. But today India hates Muslims and the Israeli state hate Muslims unless you're doing what they want. At the cost of other believers and the cost of Islam and our values and our traditions. At that time you will find Christians 
whose identity is not the Judeo-Christian civilization, but Christianity of its own tradition, of its own past, as its identity. Thalika, this is because, now remember this, because this is now the criteria. What will be their criteria? They must have Qisisin. They must have priests. They must have monks. They must be showing signs of not having proudness. Okay, now let's continue. Now I'm going to digress a little bit, but things have changed and exasperated, and I'll tell you why. Because after World War II, Germany had the stance, we're not going to really sell weapons to people, but uh, they were uh, selling weapons to kill Yem Muslims in Yemen uh, through their companies. But uh, now things have changed drastically, because first it was two things. We're going to do sanctions, which they always do. But yeah, of course, more heightened sanctions, but they always did sanctions. So that was normal and expected. Number two, uh, Ukraine was fighting and defending itself and, and the rest of the world was making noise. Don't do it. But now because of Germany, after Germany, uh, Chancellor went to Israel and after the, um, the comedian turned president, uh, Jewish comedian, uh, turned president of Ukraine. The president of Ukraine is Jewish, as you know. He called upon the Jews of the world today, basically. And after these events, now Germany has decided to to take active part in the crisis by sending weapons uh, of sorts to uh, Ukraine. Okay, this is a big deal. This is a big deal because this along with what Turkey is doing, unfortunately. Unfortunately, along with what Turkey is doing, this now uh, puts NATO directly in conflict with Russia. And uh, what steps Russia will take regarding this, I don't know. But what is now clear is that there is a chain reaction that can be expected because things have escalated from before. And when... People like, you know, uh, if you look at uh, like statistically, when people escalate, then escalation continues. OK, and so in this sense, we are in a pretty uh, bad uh, place right now in the world uh, because things are escalating uh, and we don't know at what point, what is the end game? Uh, I mean, we do have some idea what the end game is on the side of Russia, um, but Again, we're not 100% clear if, uh, you know, what this end game is. Um, amid Ukraine crisis, new German chancellor to visit Israel on Tuesday. So he visited uh, Israel on Tuesday. And all of a sudden, what happened? Uh, their, um, their, their tone changed and became harsher. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, لَن تَرْضَى أَنْكَ الْيَحُودِ وَلَا النَّصَارَى When this, and this is what I want to talk about today a little bit, is the idea of the Judeo-Christian civilization. The only thing, you know, the Judeo-Christian civilization can agree upon, this civilization of Europe and America and Israel and British this only thing they can agree upon, they can't agree upon religion, they can't agree upon democracy versus socialism, they, they just can't agree upon, they can't agree upon God, they can't agree upon religious issues. The only thing the Judeo-Christian civilization can agree upon, the only thing, is Zionism. That's the only thing. And so it is when your when the religion of the Christians and the religion of the Jews is watered down civilizationally to this one point, to this one goal called Zionism. That is what is really meant by the Judeo-Christian civilization. Otherwise, the term itself is pretty meaningless because, as you know, in the American universities and European universities, it's mostly atheism. So what do we mean by, mean by Judeo-Christian civilization? 
We only mean by that that if you're a Jew and you're an atheist and you're a Christian or you're whatever, the thing that unites all Judeo-Christian civilization is Zionism. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لَن أَنْ قَلْ يَحُودِ The Yahud will never be approved of you. وَلَنْ نَصَارَ Nor the Christians, meaning this civilization, the Judeo-Christian civilization. Now please keep in mind, I've said this before, but it's very important to know this, that Jews and Christians never got along until now, until this last century. Christians always oppressed the Jews. And so now you have a situation where now this, they've, they have this common point in their civilization. لَن تَرْضَانْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَنْ نَصَارَ حَتَّى until تَتَّبِعَ Until you follow their millah. And what is their millah? What is their civilization? What is the main point of Judeo-Christian civilization? It is Zionism itself. Until you follow that, until you agree with that, until you give in to that, they'll never be happy with you. And this is what they have caused all the Arab countries to do. They've gotten them to follow them on their one point. They don't care what religion you have. That's not what the Judeo-Christian civilization is about. The, 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 what makes you part of Judeo-Christian civilization, what makes you part of that is Zionism. And I'm going to show that to you in a little bit. لَن تَرْضَى أَنْكَ الْيَحُودُ وَلَنْ نَصَارَى The Jews and the Christians will never be happy with you حَتَّى أَنْتِلْ تَتَّبِعْ Until you follow مِلَّتَهُمْ قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى Their millah is not a millah of guidance. This is not a millah of guidance that allows homosexuality and liberalism and all sorts of pessimism and nihilism and قُلْ إِنَّ هُدَى اللَّهِ هُوَ الْهُدَى وَلَا إِنِ اعْتَبَعْتَ أَحْوَاءَهُمْ If you follow their desires بعد الذي جاءك من العلم after knowledge has come to you ما لك من الله من ولي ولا نصير then you have no wali you have no nasir you have no friend and guardian and no helper but the true Christians are those الذين آتينهم الكتاب those that we gave them the book يترونه حق تلاوتي they read their book as it should be read أولئك يؤمنون به those are the people who really believe they're the real أهل الكتاب وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ And whoever is, denies this, rejects this, أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْخَاسِرُونَ They're the losers. Okay? Now, I'm going to say something based upon this ayah over here. It is maybe correct and it may be wrong. But one thing that I'm 100% sure about, لَن تَرْضَى أَنْكَ الْيَهُودُ وَلَا النَّصَارَى is referring to the Judeo-Christian civilization, number one. Number two, the millatahum, the only common point between all the atheists and all the uh, Christians and uh, the NATO-American alliance with Israel, the only common point is Zionism. Otherwise, they don't agree upon anything. They don't need to agree. They agree upon disagreement. They agree upon relativism. They agree upon pluralism. They agree upon there is no real moral standards except for the orthodox amongst them. But as a whole, they're a civilization that has that uses religion for its political agendas of Zionism. Okay. Now, the next point, I may be right, I may be wrong, but I'm going to share it with you, inshallah. And then you can tell me what you think. إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى And when Allah said to Isa, إِنِّي مُتَوَفِّيكَ O Isa, I'm going to take you وَرَافِيُكَ إِلَيَّ I'm going to raise you up to me وَمُطَحِّرُكَ مِنَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I'm going to, what? I'm going to purify you from the people who rejected you. Now who are the people who rejected Isa alayhi salatu salam? The Zionists, meaning the, the Jewish Zionists. وَجَاءُ الَّذِينَ تَبَعُوكَ and I will make those who follow you. Those who follow you, فَوْقَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا And I will make those who follow the way of Jesus over the people who denied Jesus till the day of judgment. Now what does this mean? This has many different meanings. But one of the meanings is that the Christians 
who follow Jesus will always be superior to the Jews. But hey, Christians always oppressed the Jews. They always were superior to the Jews until they made the Judeo-Christian civilization and then they became like equal to the Jews. But then there is a group of Christians who still follow their book, who are true to their book, who try to be true to their book and have not given up all the values of homosexuality and whatnot and alcoholism and all that. So those Christians that really try to follow Jesus, they have an upper hand over those that will deny Jesus. And by denying Jesus, we also mean what? Deny the teachings of Jesus. And the Judeo-Christian Judeo civilization is in complete antithesis, being the representatives of the Jal, of the teachings of Jesus. So if any civilization comes up that stands up against this Judeo-Christian civilization, they will be made superior by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I may be right, I may be wrong. But there's an indication, you can say there's hisharatun nas. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَعَذَّبْنَاهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمَا لَهُمْ مِنْ نَاصِرِينَ And those people who denied the truth, we will punish them severely in this world and in the hereafter, and they will have no helpers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, so when you take this, the Judeo-Christian civilization, who's, and then you will find the Jews and the Hindus most severely against you. At that time, you'll find Christians being close to you. And Allah says, these people who follow Jesus will be given victory over those people who deny Jesus. And Allah says, don't choose those who are actively against Islam over the believers. When you begin to add the meanings of these verses in the light of the sunnahs of the big sunnahs of the prophet what is the result let me just share with you one more aspect of this now the word room has been used in quran uh, sorry in the hadith literature for the ones that will invade iraq and the ones that will invade Syria, which has already happened, and in the future will invade Egypt. So the general meaning of room could mean the entire European civilization. But room as the legacy of room most correctly identifies with the Orthodox Christians, meaning more so. So there's like the spectrum, a degree, everything has degrees. And Allah says that Allah is going to give room victory. Ghulibat al-Rum, the Romans have been defeated. And maybe, I don't know, there might be the Russia may be defeated in the beginning. But if within seven to nine years after that they have victory, fi bid'i sinin. Okay, in a few years, لِلَّهِ الْأَمْرُ مِنْ قَبْلِ For Allah was the matter before, when this happened, وَمِنْ بَعْدِ And after, this will happen. يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَفْرَهُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Then by that time, the believers will realize that it was a mistake not siding with Russia. And Allah knows best. I may be right, I may be wrong. بِنَصْرِ اللَّهِ By the help of Allah, يَنْصُرُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ And he is Al-Aziz and Al-Rahim. Allah. This is the promise of Allah from before and after. That Allah will give them the victory. لَا يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ وَعْدَ Allah will not break his promise. وَلَكِنَّ أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ But most people just don't know the truth. Okay. Now let's continue and see what else I have here. 
Now I want to deal with an issue that has to do with this idea of, look, the leaders of the Jews will be against Muslims. And the leaders of the Hindutva will be against the Muslims. And the leaders of the Christians, why? Because the showing of the enmity is not something individual, it's something collective. Okay? It is the representation of Al-Yahud, and it is the representation of al Ashraku, and it is the representation of those who don't identify with Judeo-Christian civilization, but identify with being Christian alone. Okay? So, yes, like World War One, World War Two, banks played both sides. So that happens sometimes. But regardless, not all sides are even in their evilness. And nor do the elites have complete unity amongst themselves. And when it comes to the occult sciences, meaning the occult organizations having an impact, then please notice that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, some of them okay, give inspiration to others of them. Not the whole, but a group. Shaitan has a few of those that are inspired from within the different parts of the world. And those leaders that are inspired. So these. But they're not the only ones making the decisions. They're trying to push. Just like, I'll give you an example. Before the Battle of Badr, Shaitan came to Dar al-Nadwa and tried to con- and convinced the Quraysh that go and fight. Right? So, but the, uh, it's, it's not like Shaitan has complete control. He has limits. He has limits. Allah has put limits. Allah is not going to give full control over absolutely everything to anyone. And our judgment in dunya has to be based upon the apparent. Even though the Prophet came to Medina and knew people are conspiring against him, he didn't say, okay, you're conspiring against me, so now let me figure out what unseen things you're doing. He went with the zahir. He went with the apparent. He put them in a treaty. If they're not just with you, they're going to break the treaty, and then it's very clear to everyone. And that's the way. There's people that Allah has said, don't make treaties with them meaning the Judeo-Christian civilization. And then Allah has left it open. Right? Just because you will find the Christians closer to you doesn't necessarily mean you have to have a treaty with them. Or it doesn't mean that they're necessarily always going to be nice to you. They're just going to be much more nice to you than the other groups. Okay? So, keep everything in the proper perspective. Okay. So now, let's continue uh this uh bismillah walhamdulillah okay so now let's study the judeo christian uh civilization aspect of this yet the judeo christian civilization excluded not only muslims okay so uh the m- mythical judeo christian tradition okay that's the main point here the mythical judeo christian civilization because it's it is something that was made up in this century to counter what to counter the soviet union it goes back to the same the judeo-christian tradition of the 20th century was one of 20th century's greatest political inventions why is it a myth because there is no true judeo-christian civilization other than the fact of zionism this is what i'm trying to point out so it was, Judeo-Christian civilization was one of the 20th century's greatest political inventions. Why? Because there were so many Jews. Jews mostly were in Russia. And they had to bring them from Russia to America and from Russia to Israel. Israel has a third, uh, is the third most spoken language in Israel. So it became the Judeo-Christian civilization. And its main purpose was to bring the Jews of Russia into Israel and into America. So they coined this term, Judeo-Christian tradition of the 20th century, America's greatest political inventions. Okay? Uh, An uh, ecumenical marketing mean for combating godless communism. The catchphrase did, long did the work of 
animating American conservatives in the Cold War battle. Okay, and so this is the reality of this term that there's nothing Judeo-Christian about this civilization other than the fact of Zionism. Okay, and just to give you kind of like an idea from this book, uh, which is called God's Country, I'm just going to read this. Um, on June 7th, 1981, Israeli jets bombed French-built nuclear reactor at or uh, Osirak, about 18 miles south of Baghdad. The reactor was not yet operational. The Iraqi officials denied that it was part of a weapons program. According to the Israeli government, however, its very existence posed a mortal danger to the Jewish state. This justification was widely rejected in the United States. Two days after the strike, the United, New York Times editorialized Israel's sneak attack was an act of inexcusable and short-sighted aggression. In a rare instance of agreement with the Times editorial board, President Ronald Reagan instructed UN Ambassador Janine Carrick Patrick to support a resolution condemning Israel. Before the unanimous vote of Security Council, Kerr Patrick described the raid as shocking and compared it to the Soviet invasion of Afghanistan. Despite see now, despite the criticism of the White House, Israel was not was not without American supporters. Soon after the bombing, Prime Minister uh, uh, Begin called on preacher and political organizer who? Fairy Jer Jerry Farewell, the big Christian. He's like the Mufti Azam. He was the Mufti Azam of America, okay, the great Mufti of America, Christian. To organize conservative Christians on Israel's behalf, believing that America's, American prosperity and even survival depended upon its attitude towards God's most favored nation. Farewell was happy to comply if this nation wants her fields to remain white with grain. He wrote in Listen America, a manifesto for moral majority, her scientific achievements to remain notable, her freedom to remain intact. America must continue to stand with Israel. Okay, so this is this is how the Christians see American, American role as far as Israel is concerned. So what about Europe? So we're going to come to that in a second. Okay, so this is the book God's Country. Okay, and let me also show you now the Mufti Azam. This was Jerry Farewell. Now this is the Mufti Azam now. Okay, the day America turns its back on Israel is the day God will turn its back on America. Are you guys getting this? This is the Judeo-Christian civilization. Okay, and then... Let's see what we have here. Um, I want to also share with you the role of uh, Zionism. Uh, let's see. Well, of course, uh, I wanted to show you this headline. The crisis in Ukraine exposes the hypocrisy of Israel and its Zionist allies. Okay, meaning America and Europe. Okay. Uh, why Benjamin Netanyahu loves European far right. Okay, so this is now the recent spats aside. Israel's right wing government sees illiberal nationalist leaders of Poland and Hungary as natural allies. They share a hostility towards human rights, Enlightenment values, and the European Union. So. Uh, the other thing that they share is Zionism, but let me share that with you in from a different Zionism, a product of European Enlightenment. So this Judeo-Christian civilization, of course, Israel, uh, United Britain gave birth to Israel, right? And then after the Holocaust, then everything, everyone in Europe became sympathetic to Israel. Then all the Jews came from Soviet Union to America and to Israel and became more sympathetic. To this cause so this was the only thing that they that's holding everyone together okay and so what else is happening unfortunately ukraine's secret weapon against russia the turkish drones so turkey has given drones to uh, ukraine so uh you you know ukraine receives a new batch of Bayraktar B uh, T B two drones from Turkey. Russia Ukraine war. 
Kiev sees it receives new Turkish made armed drones. Now, I don't know, Iran's very good in relationship with Russia, and they're also experts in making drones. Now, I don't know if Iran's going to end up giving uh, drones to Russia because of this. Uh, the biggest winner in Ukraine so far, Tur Turkey's Erdogan. Okay, but Turkey is on the wrong side of history here. Because like I said, I showed you that it seems from the Quran that those people who oppose or who follow, who claim to follow Jesus will win. That question still remains. Does Russia follow Jesus more than the other side? The other side has no religious fiber at all, except for the idea of Zionism. Okay, and so now Russia canceled uh, sea, Black Sea Passage bid of four warships. So also uh, now Turkey is stopping, and Turkey is pro-NATO basically. So they're on the wrong side of history here. Okay. Um, uh, pa uh, Pope Francis in Israel and Christian Zionism. Again, this is to show how Europe, different parts of Europe, have this one thing in common. And so the Jews and the Christians, what do they have in common? They have Zionism. That's their thing in common. Okay. Uh, Renew, uh, okay, so uh, mon monasticism. Remember the verse of the Quran, monks? Do you know there are more than a thousand monasteries have been made since the fall? Because Russia is different from Soviet Union. Please know this. Monast monasticism as a force of religious and cultural renewal in post-communist Russia. Okay. And then, astonishing church growth in Russia sees record number training for priesthood. Okay. And these are women who cover their head, as I've said. Right. Uh, I'll just read this last part over here. Starting, startling levels of growth are demonstrated in, in, in the dramatic increase in orthodox places of worship in Russia. At the end of the communist rule in 1991, just 6,000 existed, but now there's over 36,000 churches and average three new places of worship every day. So Russia is not the same. And Russia is much more closer to its uh, Christian identity than the Judeo-Christian civilization, which is basically the result of liberalism okay, and godlessness. Because of liberalism... They have no agreement upon anything, and they don't consider it necessary. But they do agree upon one thing, that is Zionism. Okay, And so when Allah says, the Christians and the Jews will not be happy with you until you follow their way. And it's so interesting. I just realized this, talking about this right now. For those of you that know Arabic, will realize this verse is very interesting for this reason. Let me show you why. They will not, they'll never be happy. Anka from you, O Prophet. But telling the whole Ummah, Al Nasara. Hatta until Tatabi' Millata Hum. Even though two groups are mentioned, Jews and Christians, but the Millah is plural until you follow them, Hum. So they will be many of them, many of their groups within them. And so you have, you will have, for example, the secular Jews and the secular Christians, and you'll have secular versions, religious versions, but they all agree on Zionism. Millatahum, their millah, the millah of them in plural. Okay, so I, I, I just realized that as I was talking, Um, astonishing church growth in Russia sees record number of training for priesthood. These are people who have integrity with their own true selves. Now notice this. Uh, those uh, that used to attend religious services at least once a month, 2%. In 1991, now 7%. Believe in God, 38%. Now 56%. Believe in the life hereafter, 32%. Describe themselves at least somewhat religious. Used to be 1991, 11%. 2008, 54%. So, 
uh, not that these numbers are 100% accurate or they are 100% reliable, but they give you a general trend, a general idea. So there are, there is those when the severity of their hatred begins to show themselves in Hindutva, in the Hanud and Yahud, the Yahud and Hanud connection begins to show its hatred towards the believers. And the Yahud have now merged with the Nasara as one Millah, as one civilization. So it really is the Yahudi civilization, which under it is the Judeo-Christian civilization, that is running its only common unity is the idea of Zionism. And then you have Hinduism. That versus those people who identify themselves as, as Nasara, we are Christians, and they don't have Zionism as part of their plan. They actually have traditional values. They're against homosexual. They want families and so on and so forth. Their women do hijab, so on and so forth. And so what should be happening in the Muslim world is that as Russia is making a Orthodox Christian bloc, Muslims should be creating a unity amongst the Satans, the Pakistan, the Afghanistan, Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Chechnya, Dagestan, you know, uh, Turkmenistan. All these Satans should be looking to each other. And all those Christian, Orthodox Christians should be looking to each other. And they should be working in tandem with those that are being true to their belief systems, their traditional belief systems, those who stand against godlessness of the Zionist movement that is their only common point. And it is this deception of, you know, having this religious label, this kind of like deception that uh, Dijal is going to use to his advantage, right? This is like part of that civilization. And so... When Masih al-Dijjal comes, he's going to convince one of these groups. And when the real Isa al-Islam comes, he will convince the other of these groups. And so this is very clear when you look at the other ahadiths from Khurasan and there will be a Christian Muslim alliance and so on and so forth. These things are there. And I'm going to be talking about that in some detail inshallah ta'ala in my coming lectures. What is exactly going to happen with this alliance? From my understanding... And no one can read all of the ahadiths of the Prophet or keep them in their mind or keep them in their analysis. It's very hard, uh, very, very hard. So inshallah, we'll try and try to make some, get at least a big picture idea, okay? But I wanted this part uh, of the understanding of what Judeo-Christian civilization means. What does it mean that... So what is what is the lesson here? The lesson here is make treaties of peace with whoever. But don't expect anything from the Zionists and from the Judeo-Christian civilization. They have no they have nothing common amongst themselves. So a group of them promises you something because they're in leadership, tomorrow they'll be changed. And this happened with Pakistan, for instance, many times between the Republicans and Democrats. <coughs> so, those you have to be careful of, and those that you're going to find yourself near with, just because they are going to show you more love than the ones who hate you, doesn't mean that they're going to be maybe honest with you 100% of the time. They're not Mahdi, they're not a prophet, they're not Prophet Isa, they're human beings, but they have some integrity, some trustworthiness, and something real to have an alliance with an alliance based upon moral values and traditional values over that group that wants to force Muslims to become Zionists. Basically, that's what it is. And that's where the Muslim world is headed to a great degree. Pakistan, the Arab world, every Muslim country is talking about, we should just accept Israel. We should just accept the Zionist movement. And Allah is saying, nope, they will never be happy with you and you will face the consequences of being on the wrong side of history if you do. And so, inshallah, I end my conversation here. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I do want to end with things are exasperating and things are escalating. So do what you got to do. 
Do what you got to do. Find like-minded people. Establish a jamaat. Get the proper clothings and everything you need to, to get. This is, you know, there's there's no time to waste. There's no time to waste. And uh, inshallah ta'ala, I will continue my remarks inshallah in the next video.